Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to this Sabbath study. Now, as we are about to address, as we're about to go through, we're going to cover a few things that we talked about last week. Hopefully today we will finish our study in this particular chapter. May we ask our Heavenly Father now for his guidance and his direction and praise him for this opportunity we have to join together to be brought into a fuller understanding exactly what he's trying to show us. Shall we pray? Gracious Father in heaven, we come before you on this Sabbath. We thank you for this opportunity we have to join together, to seek your blessing, to look to understand that which the prophets have presented before us. Direct us now, Father. Open our minds. Help us to understand all that we need to understand to be prepared for this time in earth's history. I thank you for those that are joining with this study. I thank you for those that will view this study later and ask, Father, for your direction and your guidance, that your words may be spoken, that your direction may be clear, that we may come to understand that which you would have us to know for this time. Please forgive us of our sins. Direct us in all that you would have us to do. May your angels attend us. May your spirit guide us. For this, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. What chapter are we studying? What chapter are we addressing at this point? Uh, chapter 4. Chapter 4 of Zechariah, correct? Right? Right. Mm -hmm. Now, Mrs. White is gave us an admonition that she wrote in 1901. There is a work to be done among the churches of the Seventh-day Adventists, which has what? What does it say before you right now at the top of the page? Is this work being done? No. This work has not yet been done. What does that say? Since this admonition was written in 1901, does it mean that a full understanding of the first, second, and third angel's message had come to the church? Will there ever be corporate repentance where the entire church admits that it was not correct? in its understanding of the messages that were presented from 1844 to 1888. No. Ministering angels are waiting to see who will take up the work in the right spirit. Is this right spirit to be a spirit of criticism? No. Is this to be a spirit of condemnation? No. Are we to be putting down other brothers and sisters as light comes forward? Are we to be condemning others? Mrs. White continues, you may say, wherein must we change? What have we done? It is not my work to enter into details. Now, does she say here, let some humble themselves before God? Or does she say, let all humble themselves before God? Oh. Uh, let all humble themselves before God, asking for grace and wisdom, that they may see wherein they have violated his holy law. Unless his spirit enlightens them, they will never know, even though it is set before them, by their brethren, those who refuse to come into right relation with God, who will not obey the rules of his government, do not bear his mark. Do you know how hard it is to have to say this? How hard it is to repeat this at this time in our history? Here we stand, brothers and sisters. If we're not being enlightened by the spirit of God, what spirit is it that is within us? Rebellion spirit, ain't it? 
Yes, my brother, it is. Let all who claim to be reformers be reformers in the fullest sense of the word. The Lord is merciful. Praise God that he's merciful. He does not chastise his people because he hates them, but because he hates the sins that they are committing. Who is it that God disciplines? What does the word of God say? Does he not discipline those that he loves? Our Heavenly Father must chastise them that they re, that they may return to their loyalty. He designs their punishment to be a warning to them and to others. No one need walk in darkness. No one need say, specify to me the precise wrongs of which I am guilty. To those who say this, I give the word of the Lord, search prayerfully, and you will know. How many of us are searching prayerfully to see where we are wrong, to see where we are guilty. If the warnings and reproofs given in the word of God and in the testimonies of his spirit are not plain enough, what words would be sufficiently plain to bring about a a revival and reformation? What example in the Bible did we refer to last Sabbath about this particular statement. Did we not refer to the rich man and Lazarus? If God's people will turn from their wrong ways and seek counsel from him, he will be spared a repetition of their chastisement. He waits long for his erring people to repent, that he may remove the rod from them and grant them his forgiveness and favor filling their hearts with his peace and joy. But those who in self-complacence strengthen themselves in following their own way must be left to suffer the consequence of their wrong course. Cause will be followed by the sure result. Now, what does it mean to us to be self-complacent? Are we following the right course if we feel that we're keeping the Sabbath and yet we are gossiping or criticizing other brothers and sisters? What are we doing? Is this work to be a work of corporate repentance, repentance by a group, or is this to be an individual work. Now, Manuscript 4, 1902. I attended the afternoon meeting and bore a straight testimony to our people. I told them that in various council meetings, the condition of the conference had been laid open before me. I told them that there was the need of the converting power of God in the conference. The Lord is looking upon his people with disapproval. For many have lost their first love. What does that mean to you? What are we seeing in this statement? If the Lord is looking upon his people with disapproval, and if many have lost their first love, are these people in whom the golden oil may be imparted? What's the purpose of Zechariah 4? I'm going to scroll back up for a moment, and we're going to return to this. This is White stated. Read this chapter over and over again until you grasp its full meaning. Keep inquiring, what are these, my Lord? Over these last several weeks, we have been examining Zechariah 4. We have been addressing the points that have come from this of the two trees that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. How can we expect the outpouring of Holy Spirit if the vessels 
are not prepared to receive this golden oil. Can we expect this outpouring to be successful? What say you? Can we expect the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to be successful if the vessels are criticizing, backbiting, slandering, and tearing down other brothers and sisters? Now, in this history, Mrs. White continues, we are now reorganizing, and we need much of the help of the Lord. Those in responsible positions must stand where God can use them. Brother A.T. Jones, let all that you do in your official position, your every word and action, be after Christ's order. In writing against the mystery of iniquity, trace the plainest truths with a pen dipped in the holy oil which flows from the two olive branches. Of this oil we read, I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches, which through the golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Zechariah 4, 12 and 14. In these words, we see the connection between heaven and earth. Do we desire today to be connected with heaven? Do we desire today to receive from God his wisdom, his instruction, and the ability to share this with others? Do we desire to receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the latter rain? We talk often enough about this, but do we truly desire it? All heaven is waiting for channels through which can be poured the holy oil to be a joy and a blessing to others. Who is waiting for this? What is she saying here? Brothers and sisters, if all heaven is waiting for these channels... Is heaven doing what it's supposed to be doing? What it needs to be doing on our behalf? Who is holding up the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Is God holding up the the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Is Christ? Why is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit not occurring? If heaven is waiting... If Christ and the Father are willing, where is the unwilling party? I would say that we are the unwilling party. Each consecrated vessel will daily have the holy oil emptied into it to be emptied out into other vessels. On this earth, we are to do God's work. And into this work, we are to bring the order of heaven. All that is done is to be after the divine similitude. Self is to be put out of sight. All we have and are is to be consecrated to Christ. Then will the Lord Jesus be glorified. Then will his prayer for his followers be answered. Consider this. Christ gave his prayer. For his followers. Almost 2,000 years ago. What is a day unto God? Peter understood this. Do we not understand it? What is a day unto God? 2,000 years. Here we have in the chat. A day unto God is a 1,000 years. As to God. This prayer is being answered within two days. We look at it that it's this prayer was offered somewhere in the deep, dark past. We want to see answers to prayer quickly. Christ has waited for 2,000 years for his people 
to make themselves ready. Is God slow in answering his prayers? Does God ignore our requests? Again, all we have and are is to be consecrated to Christ. Then will Christ's prayer for his followers be answered. They will be one with him and with one another. And the world will see that God did indeed send his son into the world. I have been shown that those who bear burdens in the conference should show an earnest interest in the spiritual welfare of those working in the publishing house. They should act as counselors and advisors. Such work as this, Brother Knox, Brother Corliss, Brother A.T. Jones should do. But in their earnestness to point out and correct wrongs, Brother Corliss and Brother A.T. Jones sometimes manifest a spirit that needs to be softened and subdued by the grace of the Spirit of God, represented by the holy oil. Of this holy oil we read in Zechariah, the angel talked with me, came again, and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep, and said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are on top thereof, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof. Zechariah 4, 1 to 3. What are these, my Lord? is the question we are to be asking ourselves so that we may fully understand what God is trying to show us here. Then I then answered I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches? which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves. And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Zechariah verses 4, excuse me, 11 to 14. The mission of the two anointed ones is to communicate to God's people that heavenly grace, which alone can make his word a lamp to the feet and a light to the path. From the two olive trees, the golden oil was emptied through the golden pipes into the bowl of the candlestick and thence into the golden lamps that gave light to the sanctuary. So from the holy ones that stand in God's presence, his spirit is imparted to the human instrumentalities that are consecrated to his service. What's God waiting for? Does he not have angels at his command that would come to give this message? Why is he waiting? Because the spirit cannot be poured into the human instrumentalities that are unconsecrated. When Christ and his disciples sat at what we now call the Last Supper, he revealed that one was about to betray him. What was, the, what was the question that was asked by all of the disciples? What did the disciples say, all of them around this table? Lord, is, is it all? Correct, sister. How can we read this? Understanding that God is willing to provide his spirit. God is willing to provide his spirit, yet there is none. 
that are consecrated to his service. I didn't say few. I didn't say some. I said none. We all stand together in this. What is the date today? What is the date that the world sees as being the date today? The 30th. Okay. What is the date according to God today? Thank you. We have the 16th day of the 10th month. Now, we are dealing today. We are in this 10th month of God's time. Because normally, by the seventh month, we have come to the Feast of Trumpets. We have come to the Day of Atonement. We have come to the Feast of Tabernacles. Is it not time that we consecrate ourselves so that by the time we come to the seventh month of this coming year, that we may fully understand what it means to be consecrated in God's service. Mrs. White continues, those who have a special work to do for God need a large supply of the holy oil that they may be a strength to the church. Go ahead. If we don't have that large supply of the holy oil, If we are not receiving this golden oil, because we are not consecrated, then we are not purified. And then we are not a strength within this movement. How can we strengthen brothers and sisters if we are not willing to be purified, made white, and tried? They need wisdom and courage and zeal that they may work in Christ's lines. They are to receive in rich measure the grace of the Holy Spirit. If we are refusing to be consecrated to God, how can we receive the grace of the Holy Spirit? Christ is the source from which his followers are to receive the oil of grace that is to enable them to carry forward his work. He emptied himself of his glory that he might fill his believing ones with his spirit, which would give them power and efficiency. Don't you want this power? Don't you want to be filled with the spirit of God? The devil will let clouds enough come, but there should be no crosswords in the ministry. Every soul that stands in the desk, I ask you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth to bring all the melody and softness in the voice possible into the words, especially into the words. Let the words be clothed with what? Just as though the angels were right by your side and the two olive branches were letting drop the holy oil right into your vessel then your words will be just as smooth as that oil. There won't be anything like hardness or sharpness. What we want is more of Christ and less of self. Now, this is what fathers and mothers need in their homes. They need the softness of the Spirit of God to come right into their hearts. They need these two olive branches these two olive trees, and their inquiry is, what are these? The prophet says, these are the two olive branches that stand before the Lord of hosts. Here we are told again to see Zechariah 4, 11 to 14. Now they send the precious oil to be brought into every home. Let the drops of this oil in right into your business. And when you speak to your children, Don't ever get up a loud key. We have to speak loud today to make you hear. But when we would say, let the voice be all clothed with a softness, whenever you can, God will give it to you in your home. What is the use to leave your heart all bound up and cross and peevish? 
and yet you profess to be Christians. You are just what your words express. If your words express harshness, and if you have a sour disposition, be converted. We are going through this world but once. And so let us make everybody with whom we come in touch just as happy as we can. Let us bring all the sunshine, all the happiness, all the joy possible into the family. This is what we want, and God will help us. Let us work with all humility of mind, working out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Mere hurry and bustle do not advance the work of soul purification. We shall be judged not according to our activity, but according to the faithfulness we have shown in following God's directions. What does this say to each one of us now? Are we going to be judged by what we accomplish? Is that her statement here? Here again, to repeat, we shall be judged not according to our activity, but according to the faithfulness we have shown in following God's directions. If we are not faithful in following his directions, are we then a purified vessel? Man must cooperate with God, for he it is that worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Philippians 2.13 Remember the words spoken to Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. So it's not by might, not by an army, nor by power, not by words, but by my spirit. These things can only be accomplished with and through the spirit of God the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead. Will this be accomplished by the Trinity? No, it will not. Then answered I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches, which through the golden, the two golden pipes, empty the golden oil out of themselves. And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. And said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Verses 11 to 14. Love the right because it is right. And analyze your feelings, your impressions in the light of the word of God. Misdirected ambition will lead you into sorrow as surely as you yield to it. I am trying to catch the very words and expressions that were made in reference to this matter. And as my pen hesitates a moment, the appropriate words come to my mind. I want you to understand me. Cherish an ambition that will bring glory to God because it is sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Let the holy oil which comes from the two olive branches, burn with a holy radiance upon the altar of your soul. The work of these olive branches represents the richest impartation of the Holy Spirit, Zechariah says. Here again, we are repeating in letter 123 of 1904, Zechariah 4, 11 to 14. Now, when Zechariah finishes this part of the chapter, we then segue to what we're ne- we would next be studying. Then I turned, the prophet continues, and lifted up mine eyes and looked and behold a flying roll. And he said unto me, what seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is 20 cubits. The breadth thereof is 10 cubits. Then said he unto me, 
This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For everyone that stealeth shall be cut off as on this side according to it. And everyone that sweareth shall be cut off on that side according to it. I will bring it forth, said the Lord, saith the Lord of hosts. And it shall enter into the house of the thief and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name. And it shall remain in the midst of his house and it shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. Zechariah 5, 1 to 4. Every evil worker, every evil worker will receive at God's hand according to his now, we have 20 cubits by 10 cubits, right? So here we are, 20 by 10, a cubit being basically about 18 inches. We have 3,600 square cubits. Does the number 360 mean anything to us today? Is that not a prophetic year? Amen. Yes. Okay, so here is this flying roll. 20 cubits by 10 cubits by 18. Are we not seeing, since the verse said, this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth, is this not the curse that not only goes over the face of the whole earth, but also over the time of the earth? Yeah. Is the earth cursed at this time? Yes, is, yes. is all of the earth cursed at this time? Brothers and sisters, <clears throat> What was the curse and where do we find the curse that has come upon the earth? Leviticus 26. Exactly. If the earth has been cursed, then what has occurred? Have we not turned our backs upon the promised blessings of God? Here we stand today. Started with Cain. It's, it started, didn't it start really with Adam and Eve? Well, yeah, true. Yeah. We have seen this progression from the Garden of Eden to Cain with the children of Israel, with the nations that have come up as we have examined the book of Daniel. As we have come down right to this final portion of time, we have this flying roll that we are going to be looking at and we're going to be studying. We have a question today that we need to answer for ourselves. What are these, my Lord? Do we understand this? And if we do understand it, then why are we not seeking to be consecrated? Why are we not seeking and allowing God to purify us so that the Holy Spirit can be poured out? Many years ago, after several, were asked to remove themselves from an Adventist church. I was asked to give a presentation. My presentation was fairly simple. I asked the ladies that were there, when they sought to be married, did your husband need to get you ready for the wedding? There was a very shocked look on all of their faces, as if I didn't understand what I was saying. 
there wasn't a single one that said, yes, that my husband needed to get me ready. Here we stand today. The wedding feast is prepared. The groom is ready. The house is ready. And yet the bride chooses not to be ready. Why should I soil my feet? I'm comfortable in my bed. It's warm in my bed. My beloved has been in the rain. My beloved is reaching his hand through the door, and yet I will not open the door. My beloved is banging on the door, and yet I don't want to get out of bed. What does this say of us today? What is being said of us throughout all of the world's unfallen? Mrs. White has been very clear. Again, to return to this comment, all heaven is waiting for channels through which can be poured the holy oil to be a joy and a blessing to others. Each consecrated vessel will daily have the holy oil emptied into it to be emptied out into other vessels. Each today are to be consecrated. Each today have a work to do. What is your desire? What are you seeking? For what are you seeking and for whom are you seeking at this time? Each must answer this for themselves. There can be no corporate repentance. There can be no corporate going forward. Any thoughts, questions, or comments? All right. We will then close with prayer. Loving Father in heaven, forgive us that we have not made ourselves ready. Forgive us of not accepting that which you wish to bless us with. Forgive us of our selfishness. Be with us this day. Help us to understand the presentation that is to come. We ask, Father, for your guidance. We ask now for your blessing. We thank you for this time together. We praise you for this ability to be able to address this as openly as we have. Direct us each one, for you know our needs. We ask that you may purify us and prepare us for that which is to be done. For this, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.